Okay, someone on the YouTube asked me how do I get the, my parts, electronic parts that I have. Um, so I'll do a video to explain exactly where I get most of my parts from. Um, I tend to get a lot of uh, old test gears and uh, equipment from eBay. Some of them I'll try to fix, like my Tektronics scopes that I have, like the power supplies that I have, which I managed to fix. Um, some of them are, um, you know, you can't really fix them, they're beyond repair, so I tend to salvage the parts. As you can see here, uh, I got this from a um, laminating board. It's got an Mega processor here, it's got a DAC chip, it's got uh, MOSFETs. Uh, I tend to get these out, this out, I tend to get these out, the PCB connectors, the piezo buzzer. Uh, it's got 555 chips and an op amp. I don't get them out because I've got too many of them. Got optic couplers. So here you just got so many, you know, already salvaged parts which are really good. The heat sinks are really good. The MOSFETs, the microchip, the processor and the DAC chip. Um, rotary switches which I've uh, salvaged from um, old HP test gears. These are really expensive stuff. Uh, boards like this. Uh, I get the surface mount. I get these are these are um, seventy four thousand logics, as are some of here as well. But I, I I used to take them out, but I don't anymore because I got so many of the logic chips that I don't really need anymore. Um, but what I do, I get the precision resistors out, as you can see. And uh, you can tell which one are precision. You can tell from the color that they are. Normal resistors, they're like uh, black with a white writing, but precision usually are blue. Dark blue or um, light blue or green, usually. Um, so I get them out basically. If you go here, uh, this one I've already taken out. So this board, I can take these uh, chips out. These are the Altera, um, I think they're Power or Galf, but you know, really don't need them. I got too many of them around. Um, I don't get these out. These are EPROMs, but unfortunately, they've been soldered into the PCB. And by the time you get them out, you know, you, you tend to damage the legs or damage the actual IC by so much heat. So there's really no point of getting them out. As you can see here, what I have here, uh, these are, I've salvaged these from a couple of boards that I did a couple of nights ago. I've got MOSFETs, power MOSFETs. you got capacitors. I don't usually take out capacitors, but these are Nichicons. These are really high quality capacitors. And... Um, I got these ones out because these are 16 volt, 120 microfarad. You know, you hardly see 120 microfarad capacitors, so I took them out. And uh, these are um, uh, PCP mount uh, LEDs. I got them out. Um, you got the uh, inductors. You got capacitors. You got some. Uh, these are uh, surface mount uh, uh, capacitors. Tantalum capacitors. I usually don't take them out because I really don't like tantalum capacitors. They tend to, you know, be a bit silly and if you connect them the wrong way around, they blow up and uh, they cause all sort of problem. I don't really like them. Um, you got voltage regulators. You got lattice microchips. You got op amps. You have got analog digital converters. These are 16-bit analog digital converters. You got precision op amps here. These are um, OPA 27s. You got linear technology op amps. Well, what I've salvaged from these boards, they got, they had linear technology. They had analog devices. Again, here you got um, these are uh, analog digital converters, sixteen bit. You've got um, optic couplers. You know, here we have uh, crystal oscillators, PCB ones. You know this. So right, you got ferrite beads. You got ferro bits here. You got inductors again. You got EEPROMs. These are can be reprogrammed again with the EEPROM programmer. You got switches. You know these are really good switches. And um, I got a line filter. So as you can see here, by just a couple of boards, I think it was about three or four um, PCB, big PCB boards, and look how many parts that I've salvaged from them. You know, um, I've got a I bought a uh, power supply from eBay which wasn't working, and uh, I took some parts out of it. These are the transformer for it, and these are the actual 
power supply boards. So just just here on its own, I have uh, three four-digit uh, seven-segment uh, displays. I got three uh, DVMs. Basically, these are these are like a, a chip that you like with a little bit of circuitry. It works out like a digital voltmeter or a current meter. Basically, you can use them in whatever project you want. So, you got these two boards, and I got these two transformers. I got the whole P uh, power supply for I think for about twenty pound. With delivery was thirty pound, and just these two transformers on its own are worth more than thirty pound. Okay, these transformers are rated at I think about four amps because that's what the power supply was um, rated at. So they must be rated at more. And the power supply was a final power supply. So, you know, I got these, I got this out of it. And, and you know, you, you get you get parts from eBay, like things like this. You might not use it straight away, but, you know, it's good to keep. And then you never know what, you know, what you're going to use your um, stuff that you got. The, like, you know, enclosure or parts that you have, you might use it, you know, in the next project or you might be down the line a year later and you might use it. Um, I got this off an eBay for £5. It was a adapter, interface adapter for um, some sort of uh, military equipment or whatever it was. You have this uh, multi-connector down here and you had two down there. So I just uh, took everything apart and I thought the box was quite nice, so I saved the box. I think that was a year ago, and uh, just recently last week, I used the box, my own uh, dummy load. So everything you see here has been salvaged from something that I bought off the uh, internet. So I got this is salvaged. Apart from this, everything else has been salvaged. It's a multi term port, there's another port. You can see the knobs been taken from the Tektronics uh, oscilloscope that I bought off eBay that I couldn't fix. You got the banana jet, you got the switch. So you know, if you wanted to get something like this, an enclosure like this, even on eBay, you were looking at least at least ten pounds. You know, something with this quality, like you know, this is aluminium, so it's really, really, really good. So you know, it's it's good to buy things off eBay and trying to fix. And if you can't fix it, then you know, use the parts. You know, just just you know, for for in, for instance, these um, OPA. Op amps, you know, that I think I did maybe one pound, two pound on eBay each. You know, you got this uh, sixteen-bit analog digital converters. You're looking at least about at least five pound, six pound on eBay on internet. Sorry, on internet if you want to get them. And uh, you know, things like this, bits and bobs like this, you know, you know, chips like this. The hardly things go wrong with them. You, you might, you know, you might get bored that you know you salvage a part and some of the parts are not working or they're blown. But usually things like this. If they're damaged, you can tell that either the IC is blown or things around it is blown. Or you know, you, you hardly find ICs that are like you know damaged. If they're damaged by like you know capacitors blown his ass off and is you know it's contaminated the PCB and it's gone into the legs of the IC, then yeah, that's fine. But things like this, you hardly find things like this go wrong. But taking apart, you need to be careful with ICs like this, especially op amps or SMD parts, not to put too much heat on them. You know, if you're using a um, heat gun, then, you know, you bring the temperature down, you quickly get it out. Don't put, like, you know, don't put the heat straight on the actual surface of the of the chip. You go around it, basically. Try to take it as quick as you can. Things like this, you know, you, you, you get better as you, you go along, you know, you take things apart more and more. You tend to get, you know, tend to get quick at it. So, basically, this is it. This is what I've salvaged from a couple of boards. And, uh... I'm just gonna. Well, I'm gonna. I've organized them around as you can see here. So I'm just gonna put them in my uh, cabinet, basically, until uh, I find something else on eBay and to get and uh, get more part out of it. But uh, when you get things from eBay or wherever you get them from, when you get like you know test gears and you open them up and you want to salvage them, you don't only get things like this. You know, you don't only get just the electric. You know, electronic bits. I'm gonna show you here if I can. And you can see here, this is the front panel for something I've got off eBay. As you can see, it's, it's already like this, so it's, it's good to use in some sort of projects. You know, you can put display here, you can put knobs here, you can put the banana, banana jacks there. 
Again, you got something else here which already got holes in it, so maybe you can use this as a maybe you can put the again banana jacks or things like this. And other bits you can have. When you get stuff on eBay, like say for instance something like this, you can see this already like you know we can use this enclosure for something. Really nice enclosure, you know. For uh, maybe you design a dummy load or power supply or I don't know maybe uh, some sort of maybe um, resistance box or something that you can put on your desk and you can have all sorts of knobs here or you can have some kind of display here you know it's already it's already built so all you need is a front panel and the back panel and you can put your project in it basically so it's good to get stuff from eBay if you can get them for cheap, not only you can you know you can salvage the electronic bits as you can see here, the enclosure might come useful. Uh, you know you tend to get standoffs. You know these are, I've, I haven't paid for any of this stuff. These are all what I've salvaged from you know from equipments that I take apart. So you can see you know, I've got all sorts of standoffs. You get all sorts of you know fasteners, washers. You know, bolts and nuts and stuff like that. You tend to get a lot of screws, as you can see here. So there's there's quite a bit you can you know you can take. There's a quite a bit of stuff when you salvage things basically. So you know it's, it'd be a good idea if you're gonna salvage stuff from you know from internet or stuff you're gonna buy, it's good to look at anything which is like a test gear like uh, known brand like Tektronics, like uh, you know um, Marconi, like Philips, like uh, Daniel Recker, like um, you get uh, Stafford Research, you know, things like that, you know, you like Wavetech, you know, all, all known brands, if you, can, if you can get them cheap, they tend to usually have a lot of good stuff in them, you know, you can like, you know, if I can show you here, This is what I've salvaged from an old uh, military test gear. You can see from here. These are um, precision film resistors with uh, 4066 electronic switches basically. Um, what you got here from this end to this end is the actual resistor, which is you can see here laser trimmed. And these are all the control pins for the circuitry here. Basically, you put 5 volt, 0 and 5 volt, and then you got all of this logic inputs to be able to control, to switch in all these resistors values. So, you, you, know, you put your voltmeter here, or whatever project you have here, you give it 5 volt, and then with these switches, you can switch different values of resistors. These are really high precision, and you can see I've got tons of it from something that I bought off a Kabutsa, you know, it was really big and heavy equipment that I bought and uh, I've got so much, you know, so much stuff on it, so it's, it's always good to look out for test gears, you know, test equipment, old school equipments usually have a lot of high quality stuff, like, you know, high quality precision resistors and stuff like that, like, for instance, I got this Tektronics uh, bench digital voltmeter and it was advertised as not working. I think I got it for about £30, I think £40 delivered and uh, I managed to fix it. Unfortunately, I did fix it, well, fortunately or unfortunately, because I wanted to take the reference out and the precision resistors out for another project I wanted to do, but I managed to fix it. So I'm using it. I'm not using it at the moment, but it's just sitting in the corner. But all I had to do was just change the transformer because one of the windings of the transformer was shorted out, so the fuse kept blowing, basically. So you know, things like this will have a lot of good stuff in it. Definitely more than thirty pound that I've paid for, forty pound that I've paid for. You know, the actual voltage reference in this is worth at least five or six pound just on its own. Let alone the other bits and bobs that he has in it. You know, you got really high quality resistors, you got high quality capacitors. You got read relays, you know, you got the the seven segment displays, you got this. 
So it's it's you, you need to you know, you need to know what you're buying and how much you're buying and then you know wait it out that you know it's going to be worth if I can't fix it take the part and you know use the part for future um, projects and stuff like that. So basically this is you know video to show you uh, some of the techniques that I use to get my parts basically from and uh, an, an update to my uh, to my bench recently is this two um, power supply you can see here I got them off eBay and I managed to fix them well basically this I had to uh, completely uh, take the inside out because this was a switch mode power supply and what I did is I just took it apart and made my own uh, power supply inside basically I took the powering bit out because of switch mode I took this whole thing out. The only thing here is, which is from the original uh, power supply, it's just the front panel, basically, and the rest I put myself. So I put the transformator, I put the um, MOSFETs, and the filter cap, and uh, as you can see, it's working fine. Okay, that's that, and this is another one that I managed to fix. Basically, this is 30 watt, 10 amp. This is again switch mode power supply. So I just left it the way it was because I didn't have any transformer that I can handle that kind of a current and voltage. So basically, you know, I, I bought these two for I think about um, 170 pound. Delivered both of them together, and uh, I managed to fix them. And uh, I'm using them for my uh, for my work now. So basically. This is how I get the parts, and uh, if anyone does electronic, I think you should do this. I mean, electronic is, as a hobby, is very expensive, spe especially the parts and the companies like you know Farnell, Rapid, Digikey, and stuff like that. You know, you, you buy five or six, ten parts, and before you know it, your bill is like you know hundred pounds or something. Especially if you buy like you know precision stuff, and it, it tend to really quickly get really expensive. So. By you know buying stuff from you know eBay or wherever you can buy kabutzers and stuff and taking them apart and salvaging the parts, you can sometimes well most of the time with me you can use a lot of you know save a lot of money. So until next time, I'll do another video. Goodbye.